Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress.
second away from a brand new day you don't have to know how he's going to do it to be able to hook up with him faith just opens the door you understand you just open the door he does the he's the performer you say how do I open the door you acknowledge who he is right in the midst of whatever mess the devil's tried to fill your life up with. He said, in the presence of your enemies, he prepares a table for you. So what do you do when you say Jesus is Lord? You're looking at the table God spread instead of looking all around at all the stuff the devil or something else is trying to mark you with to keep you where you can never be what God wants you to be. So we're just going to say it. I just heard that song, a song, and there's something about joining our voices together. It causes the anointing, the corporate anointing, to be, you can experience the greatness of God in a level you would never, ever get to by yourself. So let's just say it together. I just heard that song on the inside. Hallelujah.
begin to worship him in the spirit. We put our faith in the supernatural ability of God. So we open the door, Jesus. We declare the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all sin. The blood that gives us access. We're bold in our God because of the blood. We have boldness because of the blood. We rise up because of the blood. We are the redeemed of the Lord and we say so. Oh, there's nothing, there's nothing too hard for my God. No impossibility. Lord, my relationship. Oh, no impossibility. Oh, you are the restorer of my soul. You're the restorer of my past life. You're the restorer of my joy. You restore to me. Oh, the days. Oh, Lord, over my stupidity, I'm so sorry, God. Oh, say yeah, go you're ahead. Lord, you're Lord. Oh, yeah, Doug, you got it. Aren't you glad? Jesus is the same yesterday, today. He yeah. Jesus is the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you say it yes, Lord. So you kind of went that way. So you thought you lost it. You thought it was gone. But it's there just like it's always been. You got a victory song. Nothing can take away that which has been given to you by the blood of Jesus Christ. It belongs to you. It's there every day. And he is going to make things that are wrong right. So trust in him this hour. And don't back off when the day seems long. But push through with faith. And push through with victory. And push through because that's your place. That's where you belong. Hallelujah. Or it's true what they say about the glory. Oh, it's true what they say about the glory. Oh, everything you need in his presence, it's there for you. You walk in one way, oh, you walk in this way, but you leave not the same. Everything gets changed by what his glory can do. So don't expect and don't uh, 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 talk like nothing's ever going to be any different because it is. Jesus is moving in this hour and he is causing men who were weak to be made strong. He is making giants out of those who said you have no power. But he is greater than all. Our God is greater than all. And if you'll declare it and when you don't even feel it, you'll see he will make things work together for good. Even things that were difficult. Things that tried to bind you and hold you. He'll cause them to be things that will testify that you have been set free. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Greater. Greater than all. Greater than all our fears. Greater. Greater than all the fears of the world. <laughs> greater. Greater than all the temptations. Greater than greater than the sun and the moon. He said, be still. <laughs> be still. Greater. He's greater. He's in you. The greater one is in you to put you over. <laughs> greater. Greater than. Greater than the leprosy. Greater. Greater. He's great. Praise the Lord. I see some of my old friends and I, I can't even preach. I'm just going to go hug everybody. Hey. 
Woo, glory to God. But he's in you, and that's what he'll do. You know, when I wrote this song, yeah, Lois always, she always prefaces it, but she never says what I want her to say. I mean, it's good. She says a lot of good things. I mean, I'm glad she's on my side. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, oh, she says, remember, we're streaming. You don't mean to say, but like, a, you, you don't want an X-rated night tonight? You want a G-rated? Okay. And so, um, what that mean? And so, um, um, but when we wrote the song, you know, nothing really we're really standing in the middle of things. In fact, almost all the songs we write, we're usually standing. <laughs> we're standing, we're standing. Hallelujah. And so, uh, if he came and he said, well, this will never change. This part of your life will never change. Your bank account will never change. You know, this will never change. Everybody else could do it, but not you. But this will never change. And so we wrote a song that says this. You talking to me? Then call me redeemed. That is my name. Bought by the blood of Jesus. My favorite line. I'm no longer ashamed. I'm forgiven. Delivered. Bought by the blood. I'm a passed away everything I was new I'm the work of his grace I'm forgiven delivered bought by the blood I'm a new creation what shall we say to all For us, not against us, everything will be alright. Call me redeemed, you lying devil. Who oh, that is my name? Oh, this is good. It is the answer to condemnation. Because it's eternal. It never changes. Your problems are temporary. They'll be different next week. But your answer is solid ground, brother. It never changes. That's good news. I'm forgiven. That's good news. Deliver. That's good news. Walk by the blood I'm
whistles down here, but that's all right. Uh, this is what happens. Somebody when... help me shout tonight. Somebody. I, I remember the first time I came to a meeting like this. What happened? Everybody's so happy. I wonder what I have missed. About a hundred people in the shout, dance about. Then somebody said, It's time for singing, dancing, joy in the Holy Ghost, signs and wonders and miracles. If that's what I love the most. Somebody's running, shouting, learning how to let go, being blessed. With all the rest, that's joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, since that day so long ago, I've never been the same. Yielded to the power of God, cause my life to change. and miracles that's what I love the most somebody's running shouting learning how to let go be blessed with all the rest that's joy in the Holy Ghost yeah you know the reign of God the kingdom of God is a kingdom of joy righteousness peace that's what you're born of let it go a little bit Maybe all this praising God seems different to you. Maybe. You might even wonder, is it necessary to? Well, although you may not understand, it's still the gospel truth. This is the way the church began in Acts chapter 10. What happened? Well, they were singing, dancing. Joy in the Holy Ghost, signs and wonders and miracles, that's what I love the most. Somebody's running, shouting, learning how to let go, being blessed with all the rest, that's joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, they were singing, dancing, joy in the Holy Ghost. You got it? Signs and wonders and miracles. What I love the most, somebody's running, shouting, learning how to let go. Be blessed with all the rest, that's joy in the Holy Ghost. Be blessed, be blessed with all the rest, that's joy in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Praise God! Anybody in here been Sometimes you just got to rejoice about it. You've been praying about it. But how about praise about some things, huh? Are you guys okay? Oh, are you guys okay? Are you, are you, are you dead? Glory in the Holy Ghost. Wow. Say glory to God. What I love glory to God. 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 I tell you, when you see him, when he comes, it comes for you. I guarantee I'm gonna look for you. You want us? Let's sing it. And one you're time. gonna be going. Hey, miracles! That's what I love the most. Oh, that's what happens when you run into something bigger than you are. Glory to God! Glory to God! <laughs> Tonight, I did not want to do this song. 
I was in prayer with the Lord in the afternoon, so much so, I forgot what time it was, and I was 20 minutes late. But I thought I'll just be like Noah Hayes. I ain't going to get nervous. They caught him in the hot tub an hour after the meeting was on. And he went, oh. They said, it's time to go. He said, oh, is it? But you know what? As I was singing that song, the glory fell on me. And he said, there's healing here tonight. And I know, I know the difference. I know whether you're pushing something or if something's there. And he just spoke to me and said, healing is here tonight. I said, glory to God. Glory to God. And it really works better when every believer in the building joins in and worship and praise. You're helping to stir the waters. Maybe you don't need it, but somebody else does. You know what I'm saying? That's why I did that. I really didn't want to do that. If I, if, if I could, I'd have come here tonight and gone like this. But you know what? I thought, I can't do that. I've got to stir the waters. Somebody here tonight needs a miracle. Someone here tonight needs a miracle. Someone here tonight is going to need a miracle that you don't even know about yet. But because of this night, we have prepaid. We have prepared for something to happen that's going to be greater. And you'll walk out of it unstained. And if you're listening, if you're listening, you take this word. I mean, we were we were just one church not too long ago, and all these little kids were up front, and you know, and they were um, uh, they all got spirit filled. You know, I'm telling you, 60 been getting spirit filled, 65, 45. I'm telling you, people are getting spirit filled like crazy. Oh, coming back to the Lord, repenting and forget. I mean, the church is praying. I mean, it took it took something happen to shake us and wake us because the Western Church has just been having fun. And finally, we got on our knees around the world and started praying and saying, "Ooh, things are not as fun as we thought. People are being beheaded. Little kids are being, you know, cut in two. Wait a minute, where have we been?" And so I'm at this church, and all these little kids come up, and and the way they're and and, and, and well, they're getting spirit filled. And so the next night, I'm going to the restroom, and all these little kids follow me to the restroom. And I said, "Excuse me," and uh, I said, "I'll be right back out." And so then, so then I go to the restroom, and I come back out, and one little boy says, "He says, can you knock me down again?" <laughs> so I was getting ready to knock you two down. Literally, I was going to knock you down. Okay, anyway, he says, can you knock me down? And I said, well, no, I said, but Jesus can. <laughs> the Holy Ghost can. You know, and so we're in the service, and all of a sudden, I look at him. He comes down again because all of them want to get knocked down again. I mean, it's the first time they've ever had a meeting like that. And they even saw anybody like us. And so um, it's a Tim Kilstrom's new church that he just took. And so they, they'd never had a meeting like that. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, so much happened and so I looked at him all of a sudden I looked at him now by the Holy Ghost I said you're very smart and your heart you're full of compassion to the little boy that said will you knock me down so he comes after the service, and everybody's, all the little kids, I'm signing autographs, you know, I'd rather them take mine than, you know, than Beyonce's, and, 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 uh, and, uh, I mean, I pray for her, but, you know, right now, the, I don't want them, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you know what I'm saying? We need to sow to things that feed our spirit, not our flesh, and so, um, and, uh, and so he came behind me, he said, you know, he said, I think I'm going to be a doctor. He said, no, I think I'll be an attorney. And I said, well, you know what? You might be a preacher and go all over the world and tell people your testimony. I knew nothing about it at this point. So we go out to eat with the pastors like we always do. So if, so if something happens to you, these next meetings, and something is said to you, fear not, they have told us nothing. Because we won't let them, unless it's important, unless it's something we should know. Like there's going to be a person there that will come up and kind of drag you out of the room. Well, then we need to know that. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's that's a need to know situation, and so um, 
but you know, fear not, we have ushers, they'll tack on, you know. And so, so after we, we go out to eat, and the pastor said, did you know anything about that little boy? And I said, no. They said, well, he was born with half a brain. They said he would never be very smart. The reason I said that is because I said, tonight, there's a healing anointing. It's a little different, not like, I, you know, I like to, you know, me, I like to, you know, ooh, uh, you know, Vicki James said, oh, you're healed. But you know, but tonight it's different. It's different. But it's here. Diversity of his uh, operations and, you know, he's here. Is that what you were coming for? Oh, well, come on. Come on. I was just, I was just saying he was, he was just in the room and falling on anybody who needed it. But hallelujah. He is in the name. Come here, Jamie. Healing in the name of the Lord. There's healing in the name. Healing in the name. There's healing in the name of Jesus. I prayed for somebody else like that, and you got healed. Now, let me tell you something, okay? Keep, do you have a, a cassette player or a CD player or something? Okay, because see, I have a cassette player and a record player. And, you know, um, do you have CDs? And do you listen to the Word? I don't have CD words right now. You don't have any CDs? I'm going to give you some after the meeting, Okay. And I want you to look, and I'm going to give you a confession to say along with laying on of hands tonight. Because I guarantee I've seen someone just like you healed and whole Amen. and walking around. I want to get, I'm trying to build you up right now. I see it. Glory to God. I bind you with that spirit. Fick you off. Oh, that makes me so mad. Makes me so mad. You have to, you have to get like that sometimes. You have to bind it. You just have to get like that. Hey, what were you guys doing? Huh? Oh, your ushers. Oh, well, good. I'll lay hands on you before it's all over. The healing anointing still is here for someone who needs it. So, but I'm just saying, just it's fall on you tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, see, that's the reason I laid hands on you back there.
Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. expect him to move but he moves a lot better if everybody in the room is moving with him and she said she had polio and she'd been healed but then it started start coming back and she started couldn't hear and her legs started to stiffen up and her arms were stiff and she just said oh God she said I know you're my healer and I'll tell you Everybody was just praising him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Or you can say, Praise the Lamb for those who are sick to get healed, which is easy for me to say. Your sins be forgiven and rise up and walk. It covers a lot. She said, Right, I think she said, right during the song. She said, My ears went pop. My knees went pop, 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 pop. So I, oh, she said, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. I love that song. It's an old, old song. Praise the Lord. But the old and the new work together, you know. And you learn, you learn from the old. Because, oh, we're in the glory. We're in it, we're in it, we're in it, we're in it. We're in it, we're in it. You have to kind of shake yourself every once in a while. Say, what have I been doing? I've just been settling. I've just been settling. I've just been settling. I think I've been moving, but I've just been settling. For that which I loved and that all oh, which brought me in. Oh, and then I just kind of let it go. Oh, you can't have a relationship with God 
Oh, not one with God where everything is A, B, C, D, E, F. Ooh, his relationship is A, F. I said, move here, go here, do this. And the old and the new, they come together. And there's an explosion and honoring and a move and a wave. And whew. It's more than just a move. It's it'll cause revival. Or sometimes you're swinging from the lights, and then other times you're on your face crying. A revival, and everybody hears, "Ooh, that church." They know the ways of the Spirit, and they'll open up to it, and they'll let him come in, whether it's on the program or not. Because that's how every revival starts. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, the word of God says concerning Abraham. I love this scripture. It says, by faith, chapter 11, verse 8, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he obeyed when he was called to receive an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going. You say, well, why, how can you go when you don't know where you're going? Well, you know, just because you don't have the whole story doesn't mean you don't have the part you need. I found out about moving with God. If you can't move on the little part, you'll never get to the big part. The only way you get to the big part is move with the little part. And God's calling people to move this hour. You believe that? I don't just believe it. I know it from Scripture. He's calling men and women to move with Him this hour. What makes the difference between somebody saying, oh, the Bible's not real, or there's no way I can deny it's real? You know what makes the difference? People obeying God. People obeying God. One act of obedience is greater than hundreds of sermons. One act. I didn't, uh, uh, that wasn't, I didn't start that quote, but I took it. I think it's Dietrich Bonhoeffer that said it. One act of obedience is greater than hundreds of sermons. And I'm here to tell you, I don't care how small that act is. Brother, you're on a road that takes you to the place that God has called you to. And you say, well, it's just such a small thing. That's because all you see is what you're doing. You just don't see that God's out ahead of you. And he's already prepared a place for you. And he's telling you to go because he's going too. <laughs> Ooh, I'm really struggling here tonight. Because I got two things. I got two bullets in my gun. I'm like Barney Five, you know. I got two bullets. And I'd really like to shoot them both. But I'll just shoot one of them. Oh, praise you the can. Lord. It's Wednesday night. We it's got till Wednesday. midnight. No, but I'm going to. Yeah. Maybe you'll the be here. will come in. We'll be here all night. Everybody says we want that. We Hallelujah. want that. But nobody wants to stay. All right. Okay. The, uh, I, now, this is um, uh, Dwight L. Moody said this. And this is not. He did not actually. This was, this was not original with him. But he heard someone say it. And when he heard him say it, he said, Lord, let me be that man. He said, this is the statement. The world has yet to see what God <laughs> can do in, through, with, and for a man wholly committed to him. 
And then he, when he heard this statement, the world has yet to see what God can do in, through, for, and uh, in, I'm sorry, in, through, with, and for a man wholly committed to him. When he heard that statement, he said, Lord, I want to be that man. And he spent his whole life trying to live out what this, uh, this statement that he heard someone else say. And I'm telling you, when you hear something, you say, well, they said it. I wish it was just something I had gotten. You better take it because it can become God's word to you. And if you'll receive it, you might be just like John the Baptist. He took a word from uh, Isaiah that had been written hundreds of years before, and he just took it right in and made it live because he obeyed it in his lifetime. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Are y'all okay? I'm here to tell you, you may think it's just about over, but I'm here to tell you it's just turn. It's just about to start up. Especially in some of y'all who think, you know, well, I'm past 60. This is just, you know, all I got. Let me tell you, when Jesus was born, there was a young teenager and there was someone who, you know, what's it say in Scripture? She was well stricken in years. Her name was Elizabeth. And they both came together and together, combined together, they were a part of bringing a wonderful work of God to this earth. And I'm here to tell you, brothers, you may be ready to say it's over. I'm there and I can't do it anymore. Anymore, but God's going to give you something that's going to jump in your belly oh, and it's going to cause a move of God to come to this earth Hallelujah. before Jesus splits the sky Hallelujah. and takes us all home. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, glory to God. Glory. Jesus is Lord. That's what I say. God, listen. So I got to, so let me check it out here. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about how God works in people who are committed to him. And there's a story that I'm going to read to you. But before I read it, I'm going to, uh, no, I think I'm just going to get right to this story. Oh, praise the Lord. It's in 2 Kings chapter 13. Now, I like this story in 2 Kings because it tells us about really the last prophetic word that Elisha ever gave is given in this story. Now, Elisha, during the Old Testament dispensation, he would give a word from God and people would know what to do because they would hear the, the word of God through the prophet. And then they would, if they would respond to what the word of God was being declared, what was being said to them, uh, you know, that was what de determined whether or not they became people who were living out the will of God. You know what I'm saying? And so here in 2 Kings chapter 13, here's a story. Uh, uh, Elisha was just about ready. He was almost, he was getting ready to die. And as he was getting ready to die, he starts talking to the king of Israel, whose name was Joash. And he says to the king of Israel, Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 15. Now, I'm just telling you, if you think, well, I don't, you know, the Bible is just not something that really makes sense to me. That's probably because you never read it. <laughs> it's just like a jigsaw puzzle. And every time you read it, this piece may not fit yet because you don't have the other pieces that will help you understand where to put it. But if you'll just access the information and start reading it, it helps you to learn to think like God thinks. And the more you think like God thinks, the more you're able to hear what God is saying. I'm here to tell you, it, the more you know what God's word says, the less problem you'll have with what the devil is saying. Oh, I'm so, so glad y'all are so happy here tonight. But it's true. And so because that's how you fight the good fight of faith. You just stand, you know, at your weakest with a word from God, you can whip the devil in all of his authority. At your weakest with a word from God. That's what Jesus did. Remember, after 40 days, he was at his weakest. He met with the devil. Adam, at 
in, in the garden, I mean at the very best, with God's very best, he met with the same devil. And because he lost the word of God, he lost the place God had for him. But Jesus, at his very weakest, met with the same devil, but he met him with a word from God. And at his weakest, he drove the devil away instead of the devil, devil driving him off of the top of the mountain. And you can do it too. Because Jesus is our example. Do you know it's possible? It's not just possible. It's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. Well, so here in 2 Kings, uh, uh, as Elisha is giving him the word for, uh, from God for the hour, here he is, uh, he's the, and he's the older one, and he's, you know, the strong king. He says, Elisha says to him, take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows, and he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it, and Elisha put his hand on the king's hand, and he said, open the east window. And he opened it, and Elisha said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. You must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Sounds like he's giving him a plan for victory, doesn't it? You know, 1 John says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is the victory. You say, what is faith? Hearing what God says and saying, you know, I think I'll just act like it's true. I mean, if I'm not going to act like God's word is true, I'm acting like somebody's word is true. You know, who is it that's talking to you? Who is it that's making you look that way, talk that way, act that way? If it's not God, who is it? I'll just take God's opinion, thank you very much. He's the one who made me. I don't know who's trying to make you, but I have found if you don't decide to believe God, somebody else will try to make you decide to believe them. And so here is, uh, here is, he says to him, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. It sounds like he's talking to him about living and taking a stand in faith right here, right now. You see that window? Shoot that arrow. It represents total deliverance from every enemy that's against you. Praise God. Well, then he says this. He says, uh, take the arrow. So he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and he stopped. Did he say strike three times and stop? Is that what he said? No, that's not what he said. But it says that the king of Israel he struck the ground three times and he stopped. And the man of God was angry with him. And he said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike only three times. What's he saying to the king of, of Israel? The, the prophet of God, Elisha, his last words, he's dying. He's getting ready to die. And he's talking to the king of Israel about pursuing, striking the ground more than three times. He's talking to him about what he, his calling and his purpose is. And the king of Israel has, for whatever reason, decided he knows the limits of his life. He's decided what he will or will not do. And, the, and, and the, the problem is, he's the king of Israel. What he does is not going to just affect his life. It's going to affect a whole nation. What he decides to do will not just set him free. It will set his whole generation free. What he decides to do. And see, if he decides to quit... That don't mean the enemy is going to decide to quit. In fact, you can mark it down. If you decide, I ain't that interested in serving God anymore, I can guarantee you the devil is still interested in destroying, killing, and trying to ki hinder your life. You might not have signed up for the fight, but he, you know, you, you're not the one who actually starts it. You're the one who's there to make sure it is not successful. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
And so here is the king. The king, he says in the message Bible, Elisha said to him, pick up the other arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. The king struck the ground three times and quit. In other words, he, he says, you know, pick up the other arrows. He, I don't know how many arrows he had in his hand. Obviously, he had more than three. And there was something that the Spirit of God was trying to get him to see. And he was unable to comprehend that the work that God had called him to was not just based on his ability. It was based on faith in the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. And so it says, uh, uh, he says, the trembling hands, I like this one Bible commentary, Matthew Henry. He said, the trembling hands of the dying prophet, they signified the power of God, gave the arrow more force than the hands of the king in his full strength. You say, I'm the older one. I don't care. You got more, po more power than the one who is highly educated and highly, you know, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? They may be stronger. They may be younger. It's like they said in that one movie. You may be, you may be younger, but I got more insurance. As she, you know. That was fried green tomatoes, wasn't it? <laughs> Y'all remember that? Remember anybody here remember that? She's in the parking lot and somebody tried took her parking place. I don't know why I remember this all of a sudden. I hadn't seen that. And somebody took her parking place, these two young kids, and they get out of the car and they're like, hee hee hee. And she just takes her car and just rams right into it. Oh, that's the Christian thing to talk about. She said, You might be younger, but I got more insurance. <laughs> So what am I saying? They might be younger, but you got the strength of God. It'll cause you to stand even though you're weaker in the natural. You're stronger in the, in the spirit. And you can pursue and overtake all. And don't let anyone cheat you out of it. It ain't over yet. I said it ain't over yet. We're just getting ready to start our 38th year. And I'm about ready to hog tie a few devils this year. I'm here to tell you, it's not because we hadn't had any reason to quit and quit striking the ground. But I'm here to tell you, you're not here. You're not called to this race to quit. You're called to finish. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, let us lay aside the weights and sin that so easily beset us and Run with endurance the race set before us. I'm not content. I don't care what it takes. I am not going to lay down. I'm going to find me some people who will shout with me and sing with me and run with me until we run our self on to heaven. How about you? See, you're not going to do it by yourself. If you sit home, if you sit home when God's called you somewhere, I'm telling you, you're not striking the ground. If you stay home instead of coming when he said come, you're not striking the ground. If you won't, if you won't, uh, if you won't go where he's telling you to go and he's told you and you said, I don't want to do it. Listen, I know where that comes from. I've had that song. You know, I didn't want to go to France. I did not want to sing in French. Sometimes the things that are the most important, you see, you, it requires of you what you think you don't have. It requires, and I'm telling you, the will of God will require of you what you think you don't have. But I'm here to tell you, the same one who called you has already gone ahead of you. And it's a good day to obey God. The Bible says that uh, he went on and he said, uh, you, you, uh, you, 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 why? You will only defeat him three times now. In other words, his want, uh, he was wanting in the proper zeal for obtaining the divine promise. Notice what great results come from such little acts. Great results. He did not enter in. He actually, uh, uh, he, the, the extent, now Tyndall, uh, Tyndall's commentary said, the extent of victory was limited by man's failure to persevere. God had given him a greater victory. I'll guarantee you, every one of us, God has given us greater potential than we comprehend. Oh, isn't there a scratch on the inside of you? 
Isn't there something moving, jumping in your belly? Woo! This is a good day. Jesus is coming soon. And he's called men and women to get out in places and declare and, and be a witness of what is possible when a man or woman is wholly committed to him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God gave him greater victory than what he thought. I'm here to tell you he has given you greater victory. Now listen, this is what Charles Spurgeon said in, in a sermon delivered in 1889. I like this. He said, you will suffer in consequence as this king did. For after the three victories, the rival power came to front again. You will suffer in many ways if you cease to draw daily supplies of grace from God. Cease to shoot the arrows he's put in your hands. Others will suffer also. All of Israel was worse for Joash leaving the arrows unshot. Your children, your neighbors, your friends, who can tell how many may suffer because you are slack in grace and in the service of the God of grace. Meanwhile, the enemy triumphed. There is joy, I love this line, there is joy in hell when a saint grows idle. That's good. Good preaching from the 1800s. There is joy in hell when a saint grows idle. There is gladness among devils when we cease to pray, when we become slack in faith and feeble in communion with God. If you do not overthrow the powers of evil, the powers of evil will try to overthrow you. Oh, that God would give us no hesitation about our choice, but that we may continue by the power of the Spirit to shoot the arrows of God's deliverance till Christ himself shall come. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you, God is calling. There's a mandate from heaven this hour to go into all the world and preach the gospel. God's calling men and women to preach who never thought they would preach. People are walking in the church and they thought they were going to be one thing. And once they've been before in the presence of God, heard the word of God, they walk out and they can't do anything else but preach. You say, why is that? Because you got to shoot your arrows. Because your neighbor, your friend, your, 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 your generation is waiting to see the move of God through a man or a woman who hears from God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Listen to this. No, now, this is a good uh, uh, New Testament, 2 Corinthians 13. This is this will just, you know, okay, I got the old. Now I take the old, and with the new, I turn the light on. You got it? So Romans chapter 8 says this. Oh, I love this. This is a strike. The arrows you can pursue and overtake all. Don't hesitate because God is working with you and he's talking to you today about what you are called to do. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, he says it like this. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. I can't do it. That's what I'm trying to do. I like that part. Things present, nor things to come. You know what that tells me? Sometimes we're so oh, aware and focused on what's happening right now. Great, but listen to me. You're being prepared for what's to come. You're getting prepared for what's to come. The breakthrough of today is all about the breakthrough of tomorrow. You hear what I'm saying? You know, our, our Pastor B.B. Hankins, he, 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 he said, you know, people used to come to him and they'd say, Oh, Pastor, I got a breakthrough. I got a breakthrough. And he would always tell him, That's great. Remember how you got it. Because you're going to need more than one. Well, it was worth the meeting. You say, 
You say, why would he say that to him? Because he knew that the conquering, overwhelming victory that is ours in Christ is not just about today. It's about tomorrow. The breakthrough of today is all about the breakthrough of tomorrow. I'm glad you got one today. Remember how you got it because you're going to need more than one. You say, what does that mean? Because you have a victory, an overwhelming victory for things present and for things to come. That means you you have fought, you are fighting, and you are ready to fight. Woo! Now listen, some people say, I don't want to fight. You want to fight because this is a fight you win. You want to fight. You got the victory. You got the belt that says victory in Christ. You walk into the ring with God as your, I mean, you got him on you. He's the one who's saying, go ahead. I can take it. You're like, they look bigger than me. He said, they may look bigger than you, but they're not bigger than me. And I'm in the ring with you. You understand? You got the victory. You got overwhelming victory. You got more than victory for what you think you are doing right now. Don't get so caught up in seeing what's happening today that you're not aware of stepping into what he's asking you to move into for tomorrow. Because you ain't dead yet. Hallelujah. More than conquerors. Things present or things to come. Listen to different translations. It says, no, in all these circumstances, we may live triumphantly through Christ's love. I love Williams. He says, in all these things, we keep on. That's what it's about. Keep on gloriously conquering through him who loved us. Keep on. Oh, I got it. I got this. No, you got it so you can move on. Woo! Sometimes when we're shouting in a Holy Ghost service, I know that stirring of that day, I know is all about something that is to come. I don't know what it is, but I want to go into tomorrow prepared by receiving today. Hallelujah in all these things. In spite of all, the New English Bible says, overwhelming victory is ours through him who loved us. We come out on top every time through him whose heart is set on us. Whatsoever, 1 John 5, 4, is born of God, overcomes the world, and, uh, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now listen to this translation. Every child of God defeats the, the evil world. Every child of God. We achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I'm telling you that because you know why? Satan's only hope is that you will forget that you will never know what you are missing. That you'll forget what he, God has given you. That you'll, 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 you'll never enter in to the greatness of what he has. I'm here tonight to stir it up in you and cause you to want it. And if you want it, and if your passion is ignited with a, a faith in God, I'm here to tell you, you can finish your race with joy. Yes. You can finish the course that God has set for you. Finishing, now listen. I'm going to talk about this some more a little later, but listen to this because I want you to hear this. Some of you may not be here later. Finishing the work of God in your life is what every fight of faith is about. Finishing. Finishing the work of God is what every fight of faith in your life is about. Now listen. You're called for more than just today. What you think you're still breathing. And the greatness of God's work is in your hands. He says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors. That word more than conquerors comes from two words in the Greek. One of them means victory, conquerors. And the other, more than, is the word, I don't know how you spell it in the Greek, but it's where we get our word hyper from. I think it's like H-U-P-O-O -O or something like that. It's where we get our word hyper from. He's saying we are hyper victorious through him who loved us. Hyper victorious. 
Anybody know anybody who's hyper? Oh, yeah. You ever need a hyperactive person around you? Yeah, hyperactive person? Yeah, you know, you got to medicate them just so they act normal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got to medicate them so they won't run till they drop. I mean, they want to go when everybody else wants to sleep. They want to talk when everybody else wants to be quiet. They want, you say, why is that? Because they got more at activity in them then you know they got you know quietness in them well he says we are hyper victorious that means we got more joy than this world could ever try to depress us with we got more life than this world could ever try to bind us with we got more joy we got more freedom from sin than any devilish activity that's ever touched our life could ever hold us with we got more grace than sin we got more power than we have weakness and defeat i know everybody's had to look at that but strike the ground again strike what is it about you that's made you in areas i know you have to listen i can't be that much different from you every day i gotta get up and eat the manna from heaven every day i gotta get up and stir myself up in the things of god i'm telling you if i don't something tries to get my attention away from the things of God. Every day, I got to get that. I got to find something that helps me pursue and go forward in faith. I got to find the people that God has called me to. I got to find the words that he's speaking to me. And I got to make them mine. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your hand upon us that we would put uh, what you have done for us into action. I'll read you this one little uh, uh, snippet that I had gotten some time ago. It was when Pastor Andy Stanley was visiting the Colosseum in Rome. It says he was struck by the significance of the cross that hangs over the entrance known as the Emperor's Gate. He said, I wondered if Paul could have imagined on the way to his execution that one day the Roman Empire would fall, but Christianity would remain. Today, people travel to Rome, not to ask where the ancient emperors are buried, but they ask where Paul was imprisoned, where the apostle Peter is buried. And then he made this statement. I've never forgotten it. In your most discouraging moment, the time when you think it's not working, that it is all in vain. Remember, there is a cross hanging over the emperor's gate in the Roman Colosseum today. Ooh, strike the ground. Because the breakthrough of today is all about getting to the breakthrough of tomorrow. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to live for Him, and though at times I fail.
I'll pick up another arrow And I'll shoot it far and high Oh, I won't even ask the Lord Won't ask Him why But it's my desire To just obey oil. You know, the Bible says, Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. Just the anointing is just fresh oil. I just fresh oil. That's you. You just want hands laid on you for fresh oil. Come to the altar right now. Fresh oil. There's a renewing. The Bible says times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing. Fresh oil. Yeah, that's the presence of God to restore, refresh, renew, remake. Oh, Lord, let it fall. Let your presence fall on me. Yeah. You say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot some more arrows. I have stopped. I stopped it so far, you know. I just I stopped so far, but I but I want I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot I'm gonna shoot oh, some more arrows. Some of y'all don't know you got some more, but you do. Pen penetrate. You do. That, yeah, you that, do. That, that place, I tell you. I tell you, I am worn out. There's a fire shut up in my bones, and I'm worn out from keeping it in. And you know what keeps it in? What keeps that fresh oil inside? You know what keeps it in? Everything Lois was talking about tonight. Or maybe your past. Or maybe, you know, you just don't think you can. But, you know, you know, I, I, want, to, I want to tell you, there, there, was a, there was a guy, we have a, a guy working with us who was from Egypt. And, and uh, you know, when I, when I took those 21 Christian young men, you know, and, and um, you know, beheaded them, you know, I mean, you know, there's a lot of that going on, but you know, those 21, and then the news said, well, that they did that because uh, they were real quiet, they were real quiet because they, they had them drugged, you know, so they, they were trying to propaganda about that, but our friend from Egypt, what did he tell you, Lois? No, I asked him when we came home from a trip, and it happened the day before. And I said, you know, I read or a couple days before. He said, I, I said, I read where they, they said that they had been drugged, and that's why they acted the way they did when they were beheaded, and they, they weren't. Uh, and I said, and someone, I read they said that they had been begging for their life. And he, they're from the area he's from, so he knows people who knew them. I mean, they're not, you know, they, they were aware of him. He said, oh, no, that's not true at all. He said, no, they weren't begging for their life. They were worshiping God. The presence of God was so strong. The ones who were the, there to kill them were so overwhelmed. They, 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 they did not know what was going on. And they told them to spread that. And reminded me of when Jesus, you know, rose from the dead. And they said, tell them that someone stole the body. Because it was just too overwhelming to tell them the real story. He was in there, but he's not. He's arisen. Well, they said, we don't want people to know that they were so the they, he said they were worshiping God the, young the presence boys were all, of God the was young so were strong worshiping the Lord and it was so strong on him that that, that ooh that fresh oil was just, was on them and i'm telling you the presence and anointing of God is on you for what he's called you to do Hallelujah. till the last breath you take you know Dwight L. Moody they, they said that you know, he was a great preacher and there were people praying for him and they said you just need this you now just this need was this years before you anybody just need this anything. oil you know you you need this oil he said I'm fine he said you need the spirit and he said oh I'm fine I'm fine but they kept praying they wouldn't stop praying listen church don't stop praying your prayers avail much that's exactly what the devil wants you to do he wants you to stop praying and stretch on out there Dwight L. Moody was walking through New York City one day and the power of God fell upon him. He went to a place to pray and then he said after that day he could preach the same sermon, have the same thing, and instead of five getting saved, 50 would get saved. Instead of five. So you say, what makes the difference? Get saved instead of 10. What is the anointing for? The anointing is for you to do what God has called you to do. 
to make you stand instead of uh, sit down and give up, to cause you to strike the ground again. Hallelujah. I know. I'm looking at people here. Woo. It's like uh, like Esther's and Billy Graham's yes. and Dad Hagen's. And He's going to make preachers out of some of you who thought you'd never preach. Or some who think you're disqualified because of what you've done. Oh, glory but to God. But I'm going to tell you something. David was such a great guy. Don't you just love his heart? I mean, I'm so glad. I, I, I tell people all the time, I'm so glad that everything about him is in the Bible. I'm just like, yes. He had a contrite heart, a tender spirit. That's what God loved about him. What a perfect are you kidding? But boy, he said, Lord. Whew. I'll shoot another arrow if you want me to. But if you don't want me to, it's okay. It's hard. Come here just a minute. Would you come up here? Can you, can you explain anything, kind of what happened to you at the meetings? And <sighs> the meetings in, in Asheville. Is there any night or the last night or something, anything you, you heard or you felt? Or... I just know that I wanted to feel something from God. And I asked you to pray for me, and um, you did. And I felt, um, but I wanted more. And I asked you to pray for me again, and you said the anointing that I wanted wasn't from you, but it was from Miss Lois. Yeah. And you took me on stage, and she prayed for me, and yeah. I fell. <laughs> yeah, but you were, you were covered, weren't you? Yes. What happened? Just... I don't know. <laughs> Usually you don't know. <laughs> it's like Abraham. If somebody would have asked him, where are you going? He'd say, I don't know, but I'm on my way. But I knew the Holy Ghost woo, had gotten a hold of you. Remember, remember the night when that young boy started screaming the fire and shook all over, and I sent him out into the congregation <laughs> because of the anointing. Because of the fresh oil that hit him. He was swooping. <laughs> That she wouldn't give up, man. She kept coming for prayer. She kept coming for prayer. It's called striking the ground again. She struck the ground. You struck the ground till something happened, didn't you? And now that's so good, you want more, don't you? Yeah. You keep striking the ground. That's what it's. That's the way you live the will of God. And you don't settle. You know that's what happened to the United States. That's, I think that's what happened to us. Everybody just settled. Settled for soccer. Settled for this. Settled for a little bit of church. Settled. And we settled ourselves into a jam. But now the church is waking up all around. They're waking up. I'm telling you, churches are on fire. Everywhere we go, somebody said, well, they're not on fire. And I said, everywhere we go, they're hungry. Everywhere. Guys, maybe that's the only kind of churches that let us come. <laughs> but everywhere we go, they, oh, they can't, oh, they're just like, oh, yeah. Say it again, Lois. Preach it again. Lay hands again. Go again. Go again. Do it again. Go beyond everything you've ever gone before. I believe this is a going beyond meetings. Yeah, this is not just about what you think it's about. No. Just mark it down. No, these services are Whatever you think it's about, beyond. it's about something much more than that. But you'll never know what the much more is until Ooh. you step out in Woo. what you do know. And your first oh, going glory. beyond was to fix the stage. Looks good. That's just something in the natural. But I'm talking about there's more natural things that are going to happen. Well, be bold. Be bold at Walmart. Be bold wherever you go at school. We did the people praying. You know, they said that, they said that the that the 100 most famous people or influential people back in 2011. I'm sure I need to check each year, but they said of all of them, they never mentioned a preacher. They never mentioned a prophet. They never mentioned a, a, someone in their school having a Bible study, or someone who talked about the greatest book ever written the most influential book ever written. They never talked about that. They never put somebody in there like that. They never put somebody in there who, who stands on the street corner, people make fun of them proclaiming Christ. They didn't put that. They didn't put those kind of people. They didn't put people like, like um, uh, what's his name, Azusa Street? 
William Seymour. William Seymour, the black one-eyed man who helped who helped start the who God used to thrust out to Azusa Street. They didn't you know, put Azusa Street was not just about Azusa Street. No, Azusa Street was about you today. But now listen to this. You understand that? But, but listen to this. He was in Houston and going to a church. Lucy Farrow was a black woman preacher. Pentecost. He heard about tongues. A black woman Pentecostal preacher. She ain't in the most 100 influential. But I'd say she was pretty influential. He got spoken with tongues. She introduced him to Parham, who was in Kansas City, the turn of the century, where people started speaking in tongues. A lady started speaking in tongues. She spoke in tongues for three days. They didn't know anything about it. He went on a trip and he said, well, just seek the Lord about it. She spoke for three days in Chinese. And they couldn't figure out what she was saying. So they said, would you write it down? She wrote in Chinese. But they knew something happened. And that man goes to, to L.A. Every church I go into, I say, could this be the place where something will start? Could this be the place where something will start? Or could this be the place where something will start? And people will come from all over. And the meetings just have to keep on going on and keep on going on. Because the glory falls to song. Is this the place? Every church I go into. Is this the place? Is this a place where this can happen? Fresh fire. What do you say? Is it? Fresh fire. Yeah. You guys are way too quiet. Ooh, that's all right. Hallelujah. We'll help you. I want to know if you're hungry. Hallelujah. Oh, the fresh fire fell on Savonarano, the Italian monk in the 1700s, and he got killed because he said God's word is true because merely because it's God's word. And they killed him. No more of that nonsense is going on. And he waited five hours in a service and other little precious believers waited for him until the glory hit and fresh fire hit them and stirred them. And they were different from that day on. Woo. How many ushers do I, ush, do I have? I got you. I'm going to start down that end. I might go kind of quick. I don't know. I might go slow. I won't. I will not. I will not lay hands on someone unless there's an usher behind them. So don't don't fear about that. And all I want you guys to do right here is step up just a little bit. Yeah, right here. You would? Yeah, yeah. And close your eyes. Now, I have to tell this because, because of visitors. <clears throat> Whether you experience it tonight or not, you will experience it. One little 11-year-old boy, he was coloring. He wasn't even painting. He was working, not coloring, working on his... A iPad or something. He wasn't even paying attention. What happened here? Somebody moved. Oh yeah, you guys. Okay, praise the Lord. I'll get you. I'll get you. And when I called him up, and and uh, he went home and shook for three hours under the presence of God. And listen, don't don't be so quick to get back up. Let him move on you until you until you just. Say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get what I came for. I'm gonna get what I came for. The name above all names. Oh, you are worthy of all. Are you worthy, 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 And I will see how great. Watch you up here. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. I don't want you to pray in the spirit. I don't want you thinking about anything. Just make make your own altar right there where you are. Just close your eyes. The only way I want you to speak in the Spirit is if you weren't filled with the Spirit. When I lay hands on you, start speaking in tongues. God. 
Overwhelm him with your presence. You'll go way beyond where you've ever gone before there's the glory. Just keep your eyes closed. Don't sing and don't pray. The only time I want you to pray is if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. When I lay hands on you, then I want you to pray in the Spirit. And you know the things of the Spirit. Jump on in again. Oh, God.
Believe it, believe it, receive it, receive it. Receive it. The fresh fire, fire. This is a turning point week. Major in your life. Receive it, receive it. your prayers did. If you only knew, you'd never stop. Never stop. reason that fresh anointing that fresh fire don't wait be quick be quick For you, I'm believing God for you. Oh, don't you dare let anything, nothing stop. Fresh fire, fresh anointing. But this will be different than all the other times. This will take you to another place. Where you need to go. Believe me, it's different. But you need to. So you'll carry and make a road. Carry others. They're with you. Ooh, so tough. Your heart is so pure and open. You 
will see. I promise. Mark this night. Oh, I live from this place. Well, I see a lot. When I, when I stand before you, the, the light of your mama, I, I, oh, glory in the spirit. But you only carry it to the Lord and leave it there. There are times when you'll feel just, oh, something's just not right. You just, oh, sometimes I'm so, I'm, I'm so, mm, ah, what is the word I'm looking for? Oh, I'm just in my spirit. And I got, where do I go with this? You go into intercession and supplication. Something is not right that he's trying to make right through us agitated in different places and you think no you need to go beyond you need to go beyond don't settle no time for settling anymore now the glory is just going to come on you your prayers. We need your faith. We need your stance. We need everything about you. God. Hallelujah. It's a good day.
Lord. Everybody worship the Lord. Hey, but if you're down, you don't have to. Or if you're caught up in the glory, you don't have to. But if you're not, then worship with us. Jesus is Lord of all. Ushers, adults, teenagers, I want everybody to worship together. There's nothing greater than seeing the whole church worship together and lift their hands. Kids, adults, doesn't matter. Red, yellow, black, and white. Lift your hands and sing to him. Say, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're, you're the worthy of all praise. Yes, teenagers, adults. And I will see Fall in this place, Lord. Fall in this church, Lord. Oh, let it be a, let it be a, suit. let it, woo. You're the name. Worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing, and my heart will sing. How great, how great is our God! Is our God? Say it one more time, just because you love Him. How great is our God? Is our God? Oh, worship Him. Say this with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You are Lord of all. You are Lord of all. And I thank you. And I thank you. For equipping me. For equipping for me. For everything you've called me to do. everything, everything you've called me to do. I will not shrink back. I will not shrink back. I will not look back. I will not look back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. And I thank you. And I thank you. I want to be. I want to be. The one. The one. Who lives. Who lives. Totally. Totally. Committed to you. Committed to you. Everything I have. Everything I have. Everything I am. Everything I am. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Oh, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for that word that you have spoken to the hearts tonight. That their hearts are open and they will be responsive to what you are saying to them. I thank you for the greatness of your plan in their life. I thank you, Lord, because they set their eyes on you. They look away from their weakness and their inability and trust in your ability. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Every man, every woman must make the choice. Thank you, Lord. Oh, must thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor. Praise the Lord. come to that turning point and it is well with my soul for somewhere else inside I've touched that's the place I refuse to live from anywhere else your theme it is well with my soul even for the lost it is well with my soul emotionos this in the you love and those you care for. It is well with my soul. It is well. Prayers we pray to touch and move oh, even more than you ever dreamed because you know the realm. Shoot another arrow and another and another
for those who didn't understand. Understanding will come. And so will those who are hungry. Bring us again. There we go. I'm, I'm up. Let's go ahead. We're going to receive an offering for Shekinah Glory. Uh, if you're giving with your square, cash thingy, just put SGM on your memo line so we'll know that it goes to Shekinah Glory. Um, if you're giving with cash check, grab an envelope off the back of the seat. Make the check table to FVC. We'll write them a check for the, what comes in. FVC, Faith and Victory Church. You want to, you can memo line at Shekinah kind of Glory. Uh, if you're giving with an envelope, just grab an envelope, write SG on it, we'll know it's Shekinah kind of Glory. Now this, <laughs> spiritual things take place in meetings like this. Deposits, deposits are stirred up. Directions given by the Holy Ghost. You know, the Bible says that Abraham being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform according to the word which was spoken so shall thy seed be anointed words from God set destiny and we walk in the anointing and the power of that to fulfill the destiny so I'm saying don't miss tomorrow night. Be here. So, I, I, Cindy didn't come say anything over me. You know, you could be sitting in your on, on the back row and God just say something in the middle of the service that's just as anointed as having hands laid on you and a deposit's made by the Holy Ghost. Don't miss it. I said, don't miss it. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to be it's going to be awesome tomorrow night. Again, if you need to get with a credit card or debit card, my son-in-law right here will see you in the foyer. And he'll have a little square reader thing. And it's, it's swipey, swipey. Hallelujah. And uh, you can get with your credit card or debit card that way. Hallelujah. Jesus. Father, we thank you for the offering. We thank you it goes to help Shekinah Glory do what they do all over the world. And Father, tonight they brought an increase of the anointing and manifestation of the Spirit into our midst and laid here in Greensboro the Piedmont Triad has now been freshly touched by the anointing of God so we give of our natural means to bless them and to help them continue to do what they do and what they're called to in Jesus name Amen Amen Ushers go ahead and receive that Amen Praise the Lord while you're receiving the offering I, I really do believe that what, what's been happening in this church is all about what's getting ready to happen in all of your lives. I don't know if when we were here last time or not, we had this book uh, called together. Did we have it? Okay, great. The Power of Knowing Who You Are, Why You Are Here, and What You Are Made For. If you don't have this book, I highly encourage you to get it. Rick Renner did the foreword. Um, it's being used in uh, uh, Rhema Bible Schools in the United Kingdom, in Australia, in uh, uh, Africa, in uh, uh, I can't. I'm trying, I'm trying to think, and I'm losing. I'm not remembering Germany, Germany. and uh, it's just a wonderful book. Rick told me he thought it was one of the best books he's ever read on the church. I told him the reason I think mine's better than his is his weighs about ten pounds more than this. <laughs> I said they can actually take mine with them. Praise the Lord. No, we have fun. we've known Rick for a long time, but I encourage you to get it. It will hot. You know your ability to discern what God is doing today is what gives you the understanding of who you are and what you're made for. And the Bible does say that he, Jesus, said, I will build my church 
and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And if those words are just religious terms to you, I'm telling you, you miss the whole meaning of what God is doing today. The most important decision you will ever make in your life besides getting saved is where you go to church. Thank you for that rousing amen. Because you'll never be able to do what God's called you to do if you're not where he's called you to be. Because everything else, it's like X marks the spot. You won't, you won't comprehend the will of God the way you should. So uh, I want to give this to someone who doesn't have it that would like it. You guys have it? You guys have it? Well, here, I'll give it to you. Praise the Lord. You're welcome. And um, there's also lots of other things back there, the music and everything, where, uh, kind of... Uh, Two, three CDs for 20 and they're usually 10 a piece so there's a lot of you know incentives to cause you honestly I know that when you hear something whether it's a song or you hear something that's said I know that you will forget it if you don't hear it more than once and you got to stir up the gift of God and you know singing's another way of saying so you can just get songs and and get the you know hear a sermons or things that are spoken if you'll just feed that it will grow and as it grows, you'll be able to enter into what you receive. The hand of God is on this church in a powerful way. And we're just privileged. It's our privilege to be able to be here. 38 years it took us to get ready for this meeting. Hallelujah. And I'm about ready to just, you know, ha, jump over somebody or something, you know. Jump over a troop, leap over a wall. Isn't that what they say? That's what you do. Jump over a troop. I will leap, jump over a troop. Run through a troop, leap over a wall, <laughs> leap into a run into a wall. But anyway, tomorrow night at uh, seven o'clock, come back. I just really know it's going to be a good time together in the things of God. And you will not leave here the same. I will not leave here the same. And God's work will be done. And the world will have a witness that Jesus is Lord. Amen. We love you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. I highly recommend getting the CD band, the believers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's, that was their first one. That's the one that uh, every church they go to before they leave town, they got to sing it because that's yeah, always the pastor's so favorite song. Hallelujah. But go out there. get And listen, we cut our teeth on that album when we first got saved, Jamie. Now, that's, how, that's. Is that right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> listen to it. And we had the album. You and then the we, record? We had the record. Wow. <laughs> and we copied it to a cassette <laughs> snap crackle pop and all <laughs> praise the lord well now there's actually two thumb drives back there or whatever you call them memory sticks or one of them's got all the music one of them's got all the teaching so you don't even have to care you can just yeah. stick it in, stick your, in your car hallelujah you right go. stand up Hallelujah. We are so excited. Thank, look, thank you for coming out. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, bring some people back out. God, God will minister in, maybe in a different way, but he's going to minister by the Holy Ghost, by the glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you. God bless you. You're dismissed. Praise See you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.